Thank you, Trey. Day two of the shutdown. Now get ready for the sit down. But it, will it be a letdown? Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you. I'm Neil Cavuto. And at least they're meeting, right? Or will be in a little over an hour. Two sides that have been talking past each other scheduled to finally talk to each other at the White House. Let's just say neither side is raising expectations. Because ahead of that sit down, here's the latest on what's up. The White House still insisting on a clean spending bill. No give and take. Just do it. And now House Speaker John Boehner says that ain't happening. No way, no how. As Big Bang bosses meet at the White House, say the better sides of both sides is to do something and fast because this recovery, well, hangs in the balance now. To Ed Henry on some fast moving developments that do not mean anyone is making fast progress now. Ed. Good to see you, Neil. You're right. Uh, the bottom line is that after several days of resisting any sort of direct talks uh, with Republican leaders beyond just a brief phone call a couple of nights ago uh, that the president had with each of uh, the Republican leaders, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, he also spoke by phone a couple of days ago to Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, all four of those leaders coming over here, 5.30 p.m. Eastern time in the Oval Office. It'll be the president and the vice president, those four leaders, but also important to note the Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew, uh, because he is going to try to lay out the stakes, uh, we're told by top aides, about not just the government shutdown, but what kind of impact uh, that deadline of October 17th, uh, the nation hitting the debt ceiling, what impact that could have uh, in terms of rattling world markets as well. Uh, Jay Carney, though, today at the podium insisted that even though they're all sitting down, uh, the president is not going to give Republicans anything and is basically just going to tell them that they need to reopen the government without any strings. Take a listen. He's not willing to negotiate uh, over, uh, you know, Republican demands to collapse the world economy if they don't do away with affordable health insurance for the American people. Kind of a repeat of what we heard uh, a couple of nights ago when the president had a phone call with Speaker Boehner, for example. Aides say it lasted for 10 minutes, uh, but neither side gave an inch. Instead, both sides just sort of repeated what their positions are here. Uh, the, you know, Boehner wants to make changes to the health care law in exchange uh, for keeping the government open or getting it reopened now. Uh, the president doesn't want any changes to the health care law, so they're still at loggerheads here. Uh, and that's why earlier today the president brought some uh, CEOs from Wall Street here, like Lloyd Blankfein at Goldman. Sachs, uh, Jamie Dimon, and others uh, to basically uh, help them spread his message, but also try to get these Wall Street folks to put some pressure on Republican lawmakers. Uh, and Lloyd Blankfein is one of the CEOs who came out to the cameras with Brian Moynihan from Bank of America and basically tried to uh, sort of add to the president's message that the government shutdown is one thing, uh, but defaulting could be much worse. Take a listen. There's a consensus that we shouldn't do anything that hurts uh, this recovery that, uh, that is a little bit shallow, not very well established, and is quite vulnerable. And uh, the shutdown of the government, but particularly a failure to raise the debt ceiling, would accomplish that. So as you suggested, this sit down might end up being a letdown because there are really no signs suggesting that there's going to be some sort of major breakthrough tonight. This may just be the beginning of some drawn out talks that see this government shutdown go on for days. Uh, in the meantime, though, one thing has been impacted for the president. That's his schedule. He's supposed to leave Saturday to Asia for four stops. They've now cut off the last two stops. At this moment, he's still planning to leave for Asia and go to the first two countries, go to Indonesia on Saturday. But the White House is saying, they're going to evaluate that every day between now and Saturday, Neil. So, Ed, real quickly, they, they meet at the White House. No one's changing their position. What, do they just stare at each other and then go? What? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, at least maybe there's progress that they're finally getting into the same room uh, to try to move this forward. So far, it's just been sort of governing by press release, both sides uh, giving their talking points and moving on. Now, maybe they'll just give the talking points behind closed doors. Uh, but right now, there are no signs that either side is moving an inch, Neil. Thank you, Ed. Ed Henry at the White House. Wait, they don't come better, huh? All right, uh, Fox Business Network, Charlie Gasparino, keeping track of these developments, including all those big bank honchos at the White House. Odd that time. Really? I mean, just think of it this way. They're all under investigation. Jamie Dimon is getting ready to pony up maybe $11 billion, maybe more. President Jamie Dimon runs J.P. Morgan Chase. Chase. Uh, and guess what? They all, but they're all under investigation, various deeds or misdeeds, or however you want to describe them. And guess what? The president calls you up and says, we'd like you down here to like, support me in this, in this, in this uh, government shutdown. And guess what they say? Yes.
I mean, this is. Are they going to get any more lenient treatment? Are those listen, fines going to be any less? Who knows? But no. I'm just telling you, this is a huge conflict of interest. It's as if Rudy Giuliani, as the U.S. attorney, because remember, the government, the federal government, as the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Fed, the Justice Department, they're doing these investigations. The CFTC. It's like Rudy Giuliani calling up Drexel and saying, "Hey, you know, I want you to give me a campaign contribution." Now, this was right arranged some right time ago. I put you on the out right. of business. Well, this was arranged some time ago, but he thinks, no, knowing the, that this no, was going to happen. The, the, the hearing, the, 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 the group, the lobby group that they're going to go talk to, which Lord right. Blankfein runs of the financial services, I, I can't remember the name of it. It almost doesn't matter to me. Uh, that, that, that meeting was going to happen a long time ago, but it happens as they're down here. I got gotcha. you. Know, but this is very public. Just think about all these guys. They're being used. Lloyd Blankfein, Brian Moynihan. Jamie Dimon, all of them are being used as props in this spectacle. Take, say what you want about either side of this, whether you support the Republicans on their side and they're shutting down the government, what the president wants, I, I don't care. This is a huge story in the sense that these guys are suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. They're out there. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised Lloyd Blankfein didn't start going, you know, blinking with his eyes, Morris Code torture. I mean, yeah. I, I mean it was <laughs> but, just... But it is funny. I, I, uh, Jamie Dimon, our own Rich Etz at a Fox Business Network, <laughs> caught up with him yeah. as they were getting to the White House. Let's take a look at that. Should the president negotiate on the debt ceiling? I would love to see resolution, solutions that are good for America, good for jobs, and good for growth. And I think everyone in this group would say the same thing. So we should negotiate? You, you can call what you want. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a politician. I just want to see America grow so that people have jobs. Listen, Wait, these guys are more politically circumspect than the candidates. I, said, I love Jamie Dimon. I, he's a good CEO. I mean, he's getting a lot of pressure. I've known him for. I've known him. I tell him this. I know neither of us had gray hair. Okay. I can tell you this: that Jamie Dimon called Dodd Frank monumentally idiotic at one point. He attacked the president. That was the nail in his coffin. And, that, and I'm telling you that if you talk about a 180, you, you got it right there. That is the most politically correct Jamie Dimon ever. I mean, just think remember though when he had almost a fast pass to the Oval Office and he was the. You know, it, it seemed like a big Obama backer, a big friend well, of the president. What happened? If, I don't know if he was a big Obama backer. I know he backed him for the first in the in the first run. I know J.P. Morgan as a whole backed right, him, and, right. he, and he prodded some people along. Uh, and he, by the way, the president liked him because guess what? It's not bad having the one banker that avoided the financial crisis to come into your office every now and then. It makes you look good. Right. So I mean, that was mutual. Uh, but I will say this: that you know, that is proof positive. What he just said, how, what a farce this is. I mean, okay, just think about it. The most poignant thing the head of the biggest bank is said today was i think we need more jobs it's true it's a good point i mean it's just insane all right almost as insane as you're not wearing a tie <laughs> okay i'm sorry no. you I'm, look I'm, next time i come here i'll wear a tie no it's fine you want to see the gold chains no no i don't want to see sorry. the gold chains um all right charlie gasparino thank you my friend he's so good meanwhile to former white house advisor pat you kind of talk about a guy who's good says it's time for the president to step up and start leading uh, pat as you probably know um, Democrats say he doesn't have to do any of the above. Uh, the health care law has been decided. There's nothing to negotiate. You Republicans get off your fannies, give us a clean spending bill and move on and shut up. What do you say? Well, he's president of the United States and the idea that he's flying off on a junket to Bali and he's going to Brunei as well when his own country, I mean, after you look at this meeting you've just described and the meetings coming up and the debt, uh, the debt ceiling and all the rest of it, I think that's grossly irresponsible. They ought to put a Denver boot on Air Force One and he ought to sit down and negotiate with these folks. As for the Republicans, you can accuse them fairly, Neil, of trying to first shut down Obamacare, then to suspend it for a year, then to reform it. But they are not shutting down the government. The people shutting down the government are the people that blocked those veterans over at the World War II Memorial from going in there. And that's some character at OMB and the folks at the uh, No, we, we, will be getting, we will certainly be getting into that. But I, I do want to know how you compare what's going on with this shutdown versus the last one 17 years ago. The argument, the typical mainstream media argument from that one is that Republicans got the shorter end of the stick. Now, you and I can know in retrospect they did get their way on controlling spending. They uh, right. suffered very little in the House elections that year. They gained in the Senate. They gained governorships. Of course, with Bob Dole, they, they lost the presidency to Bill Clinton again. But, but right. be that as it may, it wasn't as devastating as it was portrayed then. How do you think this will fall out now? 
Exactly right. It wasn't as devastating as it was. Uh, I mean, this one right here, I think the Republicans are not in the best position. There's no doubt the polls have them somewhat upside down. But Barack Obama is not escaping injury from this. That's why this meeting, in my judgment, is being held today, Neil. He realized that he's coming off intransigent. When he gets up and says Republicans are the ones shutting down the government, he's not speaking the truth. And my guess is in the White House they're saying, look, you got to start acting less like uh, one of Saul Alinsky's rule for radicals, community organizers, and more like the President of the United States. The country does want this resolved, and maybe they're blaming the Republicans, but they're also blaming Harry Reid and Barack Obama. You know, uh, one quick thought, and I, I was thinking of this so you can dismiss it at well. I, I certainly would if I were you. But, you know, the longer it goes on, Pat, um, and we learn that we can survive without, I guess, two-thirds of federal government workers, a lot of folks are going to start saying, a la sequestration and those so-called devastating cuts that weren't so devastating, hey, um, what's the deal here? And isn't that what some Democrats might be afraid of, that the, the longer this drags on and life goes on, uh, some serious bumps notwithstanding along the way, I'm not dismissing them all, then, then that's what some Democrats fear, that it's going to be revealed that this government is too big. <laughs> well, it's not only that. The Republicans now, look, the Republicans are being accused of shutting down the government, but you can see every day, what did they pass yesterday? Keep all the monuments and memorials open in D.C., pass a budget for D.C., pass a budget for the Interior Department so Yosemite and the other national parks can stay open. If Republicans will do it one by one, a continuing resolution for every one of these areas, I heard about NIH today, they said there's problems, and problems at FDA. Right. Pass a continuing resolution for that, and let Harry Reid turn around and say, I'm not moving it unless Obamacare is attached to the FDA. Well, it, it's going to be a pox on both parties' houses. It rarely goes one way or the other way. Um, but but one, one thing, Neil, is, sure, go ahead. look, we found out after the, the, really, the battle over gun control, remember that, Republicans sure. on, the, on the AR-15s and on the clips and on the, uh, on the, on the government having the preclearance and all the rest of it, Republicans stood firm and tough when they said 90% of the country was against them. After that went into the past, Republicans moved up to where they were in their strongest position before this battle. The American people tend to forget the battle and they tend to focus after it's over more and more on what was that about and when they do they're going to focus on look the republicans tried to stop this obamacare and reform it i'm not no. sure that's going to be a bad position in 2014. pat i'm going to put you down as a maybe on the president's position <laughs> all right pat buchanan <laughs> It's always okay, good. Okay, you take it easy, my friend. All right, thank you very much. Well, one thing we do know for sure, this thing's a mess. And it doesn't look like it's ending any time soon. That's why we will be live Saturday for a special Cost of Freedom business block. Shut down, what's up? We just believe in a paucity of words here. Meanwhile, when the greatest generation makes a huge sensation. This isn't just about a memorial, my friends. This is about true American treasures teaching both parties a lesson in backbone. We're going down here. We're going on the Pacific.